My name is Kate Hatcher, and I am the chair of WesterCon 72, NASVIC 2019, and 1632 Minicon. We're combining them all into one event. Late in Utah, July 4th through July 7th at the Leighton Davis Conference Center and the attached Hilton Garden Inn and a couple of really close hotels. Um, I want to thank everybody who voted for us. It has been a very, very long process. Combining three into one, going through two bids over two years. And since I do not have a presentation, I just wanted to let you know that our WesterCon guests include writer Jim Butcher, <coughs> Kitty Krell, who does cosplay, Vincent Villafranca, Kevin, Lisa, and Kuma Bear are fan guests of honor. <laughs> and we have added Eric Flint as a special guest. For our NASFIC, we have a combined two people who have been writing for almost 30 years. We have David Weber and Laurel K. Hamilton. And we also have Linda Deneroff as our NASFIC fan guest of honor, so we can focus on the business meeting and getting everyone involved, which makes all of my fan guests of honor very happy. <laughs> and we have Dragon Drone, and we elevated Vincent Villafranca to make him a combined NASVIC and Westercon guest because we just believe he's that dang good. <laughs> but then again, we also have a local sculpture that we have in our pocket named Devin Doherty. So we're hoping to get them both in a room and watch them go to town. Our master mistress of ceremony, because we have such a big guest lineup for the conventions, is Bijo and John Trimble. <coughs> and for those who have seen it, we do have a new sponsor for them. Katine has stepped up and offered to sponsor the rest of their sponsorship for us, so they will be there. And we are going to have a Star Trek 4th of July breakfast with Bijo and John Trimble and Dragon Drone, who worked on props for all the newer Star Trek movies. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting someone, but I can't think. So, oh, we have another guest. We don't have his picture and bio up because he's had personal things to deal with, but we have recently added, thanks to Phoenix Filk Circle, Tom Smith as our Filk guest of honor. <laughs> I think that's it. Our hotels are now live. We have four hotels in our block. The furthest one away says it's 900 feet. I don't believe it. It's about a three minute walk or less, probably five minutes for me because I'm slow as molasses, but they're all very, very close. And I have my facility person, Mike Wellmuth here and my new facility person and my new programming person, Kelly Stray. And we wanted to just say thank you for sticking through us. We are going to have an amazing time in July. And we are hoping that it is further enough away from sexy, sexy Dublin that you guys will take a detour and come say hello. That's it. Thank you very much. Now, um, if there are any questions for Utah, um, once again, stick your hands up. Our runners are out there on the floor with the cards. I have a question. Um, uh, <laughs> the website says that the travel time between Salt Lake City Airport and your facility is about 20 minutes, but it seems to be a little bit longer. Is there a transportation that's gonna be made available for people traveling from the airport to where the actual convention is being held? It's actually technically 25 miles from Salt Lake and 26 miles from the airport. Um, freeway time's about 20 minutes, give or take. We do have alternate transportation options on our website. However, we realize that bus and train or plane or automobile or three-seat bicycle 
it's still a little concern and we have enough people coming in probably on the 3rd of July because the first day of the convention is the 4th of July that we are in contact with our CVB as they call it Davis County Tourism and Events and we're trying to arrange discounted transportation and available ADA transportation is also being discussed but there are options on the website already under locations and transportation. Um, are you still using the name SpikeCon or has that been altered? It is a nickname simply because we had two processes in mind. One, there's three conventions and if you're trying to d discuss this thing, saying all three conventions every time starts to be a tongue twister, especially when I get nervous. The second part is that we are combining a regional and an ASFIC, Eats Me West. The Golden Spike Museum is an hour away from us, so we've been using it as a nickname. Now, I know there's some people who are concerned about it, and I apologize, and we have been working through to show that the intents that are read into the nickname aren't what we feel and aren't what we are planning to doing, but we're just going to have to be able to show you at the convention that it is simply a nickname. And we have all three websites that redirect to spikecon.org, but they are all there for people to find. I don't have your questionnaire in front of me. I apologize. Um, in it, did you answer the temperature range, daytime and nighttime? Um, temperatures around 4th of July weekend are usually in the low 90s. There is a factor that we have very little humidity unless we get a freak rainstorm, which rarely happens because the Great Salt Lake is very close and we are 47,000 altitude or 4,700 altitude. Sorry. <laughs> we have the mountain right here and the desert right here, and it kind of combines into a wannabe Arizona, but not nearly as hot. Nighttime can get about 70, sometimes 80, depending. Any further questions for Utah? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Once Thank again, you. the committee will be out there. Um, if you have any questions, please approach them.